Fixing a slice can be really easy, but it all starts with the grip and getting in the right posture. So let me go ahead and jump right into this. A lot of times when players struggle with a slice, they'll have what I call a weak palm grip. Now, what this means is the palms of my hand are too much straight up and down. So if I set up this golf ball and I imagine my palms are facing this way, as I take my grip, that's a fairly weak position. You'll notice how the V between the thumb and the forefinger, I always think that's a little bit confusing, is more toward my chin. I really think that that's, that's a little tougher to visualize than where is my palm. So as I grab this club, is my palm facing this way or is it facing more on top or underneath? So anything that's vertical or more underneath would be a very weak position. The ball's gonna wanna slice. The reason for that is, is if I take my palm and put it more under the club like that, and then I take my grip, you can see my hand is turned to the left quite a bit. And now it's very difficult to turn it any more to the left. So even if I turn it as much as I can, I'm fully maxed out, look, the face is just barely square. This feels really comfortable from that position. And now the face is 45 degrees open. It's gonna be a big, massive slice. So here's the first piece of that. Take the palm of your hand as though you're about to grip the club. Go ahead and set up, to, set up with the club as it would be in a dress position here. And I'm just gonna hold the tip of it with my right index finger. And then from there, I'm gonna take my palm and put it about 45 degrees to the right. So imagine there's a plane of glass or something that's sitting here at this angle. My palm is gonna be on that angle. Then from there, I'm gonna go ahead and grip the club that way. Now that seems a little bit on the extreme, the stronger type grip, but I would rather see somebody grip it too much this way, too much with their palm on top or a stronger palm than the other way if you're struggling slicing. It's very easy to back off that a little bit. Now the second piece here is we gotta make sure that it's in the fingers. So if you make a hook, again, I think we get way too complicated with this. Let's make it really simple. Make a hook with your hand like this. That's that's where the golf club sets, is in that hook. Then you just close your hand on the, on the glove. So if I have that hook here now, again, if I put the hook straight up and down with my palm straight up and down, that's a fairly weak position. I'm gonna go ahead and take that palm and turn it 45 degrees to the right, roughly 45. Now you can see that hook would be more this type of an angle, right? So my hook, instead of being straight up and down, is more turned like that. And I go ahead and take the club gripping it just like that. You're gonna see that my thumb here, there's these little uh, arrows on top of my grip. It doesn't matter what we have on your grip, but if that's 12 o'clock or facing straight up and down, my thumb is now gonna be positioned at about 1.30 on that clock face. So kind of halfway between 12 o'clock and three o'clock on the right. So now we got a good strong grip. This makes it a lot easier to release that club face. But there's still one thing that happens here. No matter how strong my grip is, I could always just hold it open and still slice some more. And a lot of times people have this idea that if they get more lag or they do other things that they're trying to do in their swing, like shallow the club from the inside or have more lag or get their hands more in front and impact, that's gonna keep the club really open. Well, this is where momentum comes in there. I wanna feel like the momentum of this club is releasing all the way through. So let me give you an example of this. When we think that we're gonna have more lag and block it or slice it, we tend to stand up out of our posture, roll our forearms to try to square that face, and now all of a sudden, not really the best swing, even though I did square it up. Here's what I want you to feel like though. Go ahead and get this club in a lag position, a good shallow from the inside lag position. So the club shaft is parallel to the ground on the downswing. The club head, instead, or the, the club shaft instead of pointing toward the target, is now from the inside, it's in here. This is the position the pros are coming from. And now from here, I can keep my hands in front this entire time. I can have a lot of lag and release on out in front, and I can have the club face closing the whole time. So all I'm trying to say here, and this is a big sticking point, I can have my hands in front of the club head, and I could be releasing this club, I could be, the momentum of this club can be releasing. I don't have to kick the whole shaft forward to close the club face. So what most players are doing is they never have this feeling of getting the momentum of the club turning down. Look at the face of this. That's releasing, that's the release as I'm rotating through the shot. So that's gonna square up the face. So that's piece number two. Number one, take your stronger grip, strong palm. Let's take your palms more like this on the club. Number two, when I have lag and I'm from the inside, I'm letting the club head turn on over as that's happening. So let's go ahead and give that a try. 
Let's see if I can hit a nice little draw here. There we go. Started that one out to the right. You can see it's drawing back. So if you look at the black tracer on the bottom of the screen, you can see how it's turning over from right to left. Now it feels like it's almost impossible for me to not get that club turning over from right to left if I get my good grip, my good power draw grip. And from there, I get the momentum of the club releasing this way so it's turning on over. Now, a lot of people struggle with this. They struggle with the idea of rotating their wrist that way. Like I said, most people have been taught that they want to square the club face up by flipping the club and releasing it like this. They're almost rolling your forearms over each other to square up the club face. That's not the way the pros are doing it. The pros are squaring up this club with tons of lag and having the club release like I just showed in this video. It's what I call the anti-roll method. I'm gonna teach you the right way to square it up like the pros instead of rolling the forearms to square it up like most people have been taught. Now I'm gonna play a preview of this video here in just one second. All you need to do is go ahead and click the card that pops up somewhere in your screen. If you don't see that card, don't worry. Go down to the link below in the description, click there, and you'll get instant access to this anti-roll method video. I can't wait to show you the way the pros are doing this with their arms to build on what we talked about here today. Let's go and get started. So here's the bottom line. If you've been taught to roll the club in the early downswing, that causes the shaft to get steep. And that steep club causes all your problems. It causes you to hit it way behind the big hitters and way inconsistent with your quality of strikes. So you're in the tall grass and the trees and the hazards all day long. Now the great news is this. There's really only two pieces that you need to know to fix all these problems. The first one is we need to learn the proper way to square up the club face. Instead of rolling the forearms and getting steep, there's another way that the pros do this. Once you learn this right way to square up the club face, then you can shallow out from the inside and everything starts to fit together. Now I'm gonna teach you this right now in what I call the anti-roll method. You may also hear this called the motorcycle move or the tour twist, but let's walk through exactly how to do that. Now what I want you to do is go ahead and go kind of in the last parallel in the downswing. So here, I want my hips to go ahead and be opening up. I want my club to be parallel with the ground and I want my hands to be in front of my right thigh. Now, when I take my grip, you're gonna notice that when I do this, the club face is basically straight up and down. So if I'm looking at it from this angle, you'll see the face is straight up and down and my logo of my glove is pointed out in front of me. Now from there,